any general questions about Gibbon, how you might use it, where it's going, anything like that. We do have some spare pizza if anyone wants it. Yeah, if any of you can get down here in the next 15 minutes, there's some pizza going spare. Send us a stamp address anyway. Give people a moment there to type in any questions you might have. Um, from my point of view, because we don't have a lot of that set up, to go back to the schools and explain what we can do is actually quite difficult. Yeah. Um, similarly, it's quite difficult to get you from Sharpe to kind of appear in the schools. Uh, any chance of any wonderfully pitched videos? Because I'm thinking, if the principal of the school sees that, she yeah. must be excited. Yeah. But to actually get it to come to a meeting... It's um, pretty tough. Yeah. So how, how else can we pitch it? Yeah. How can we repeat this? Because, again, the people who are um, participating aren't going to get to go away and demonstrate this. Because you need the data. It's got to be all set up. Yeah. And it's only then you get the power of it. And a lot of the paid services can be very, very slick videos. Yeah. And then you'll get handed down from the head. And <laughs> so it's hard to go to and it's like, yes, this video looks slick because they paid more for the video than the software. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's definitely some scope there for us to do like an elevator pitch style video, like a one minute what is given. That would be a really nice thing to do. Um, and then maybe a longer five minute uh, like sort of quick tour. If you look on the... Yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but say something like that is a very new concept to a lot of schools, yeah. isn't it? But it's also very exciting. Yeah. Uh, but unless you see it in action, um, it's not going to mean a lot to some yeah. people. Say to, to some of the schools that I work in, they're just going to think, what on earth are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whereas yeah. I, I think it, a lot. It, it could change the whole way they do things if they understood what's going on there. Yeah. There are, for free learning particularly, there are two free learning public free learning installation. So there's Libra Learning, um, where you can register as a member of the public um, and then log in and have complete access to almost all of those ICT units that I showed you. Okay. Um, so you can, you can make an account and demo that in schools if you want. Um, the prerequisites on this one, you don't have to have finished this unit to unlock the next unit. You can go into any unit at will um, and look at any unit. Um, and in this one, there's no there's no one there to submit your work to and to mm -hmm. get feedback on, right? Um, so what we did for teacher learning, and this is actually where um, free learning is getting even more interesting, is that at our primary school this year, and probably at our secondary school next year, we're going to do uh, staff professional learning through free learning. So if you go to this website, any member of the public can uh, register for, it's called Gorilla PD. Um, if I sign in there, I see the same kind of map, but the map is not aimed at students, it's aimed at uh, skills for teachers to become better teachers. Now, a lot of these units, almost all of them, uh, some of them you'll recognize from the other map. I just copied them over because uh, they're applicable to teachers as well. Almost all of these up here are ICT, but we've got a unit down here from Sterling on language pedagogy, and then we've got a, the sleep unit on sort of emotional well-being. But my aim here eventually is to have a map where teachers can come in and say, well, I really want to learn about literacy. And so they filter down. Right, at the moment, there's only one thing there, but it gives them a pathway, a set of different ways to learn about literacy. Um, and if you use this, when you enroll for a unit, you can choose another community member to become your mentor. Someone who's already completed that unit. So anyone who completes a unit and gets approval from another mentor then becomes a potential mentor for someone else. So these are tools you can use to demo that um, at schools as well. Question. Yep. No. Oh, there is a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, how how to set up the cumulative section in the mark book? It's a good question. Sandra, okay. do you want to jump on sure, the computer I can here? Sure. Before we before we go away from Gorilla PD, what, yeah. what are the chances that Gorilla PD could have given focused PD within it? Is there a given section? Yeah, there is. Yes. I saw a given. 
it's very small at the moment, but it's there, yes. So hopefully eventually that becomes a place where people go to learn about Gibbon. Yeah, and that yeah. would be an interesting way for schools teaching their stuff. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. All right, do you want to come and jump on my computer sure. here? You're in the mark book settings. Can I mess with your demo install, or do you want me to mess with this one? Uh, this this is fine. I actually deleted that demo one earlier, but this is my working demo, so go nuts. I can always rebuild it. <laughs> I'm not going to come over here to eat more pizza. <laughs> okay, um, to start getting set up with the cumulative, it helps if your system is set to a percentage for the default assessment scale. So I'm just going to switch over to percentage. And then I'm going to hop over to school admin and set up some of the markbook settings. So to get started, you need to turn column weightings on. Um, even if you don't actually use the weighting system, this is where it starts calculating things. And Ross's attainment marks are on. And I'm going to turn this one on. It depends on whether your school uses terms and wants to calculate cumulative marks by term. So by setting all those things on, I should be able to hop back over here to the mark book and start adding stuff. Maybe I can find a course that doesn't have that stuff. And because I turned group by term on, um, we can't automatically see everything. If I pop back over, okay, this course is empty. So I'm gonna start adding some stuff. Um, test assignment. I'm going to choose a random type for now. And then, as because the attainment scale is percentage, I can also set a total mark. So let's say you have a quiz, a test, assignment, it has a certain mark, it's out of, let's say, 45, you can enter a raw mark. This isn't necessary, but it helps you calculate your percentages. And I'm going to leave the weighting for one. It's, it's good to think of that weighting as a multiplication factor, so right now everything is multiplied by one. With that set up, if I hop back over to the mark book, oh, there's no students in this class. I'm going to pick a class that has students. Um, I can't tell if there's students in the class until... one, 7.1. Thanks, Ross. Awesome, this one has students. Can I go ahead and delete this? Yep. Awesome. Okay, we have a class that has students. So, same thing as before. Someone was messing with marks previously. Okay, I'll go back to that, just glaze over that one for now. Um, back to entering those things. I'm turning these off for now just to make the columns a little bit skinnier when looking at them. So now if I hop back over here, targets, I'm going to turn them off, or I can turn the percentage, but I'm gonna turn them off for now. Where's the blank, there's no blank. They all became seven. I will look at that later. So now that there's a new assignment and it has a percentage scale and attainment, we can hop over here in to start editing or entering data. So because we said the mark was out of 45, I can enter some of the raw marks, hit tab or enter, and it will automatically hop down the page. So if you're entering a bunch of marks, you can just fire them in rapidly. Um, these four students are going to get some really horrible marks because I'm just ty typing random numbers. <laughs> and it's, of course, limiting it to the um, maximum of 45. So those are some marks for these four unfortunate students. If I hop back over here, we can see that... Um, so I get a seven. <laughs> Interesting. That... <laughs> like a... There we go. I just needed to resubmit. That's better. So it looks like the um, if you go back because in, I switched my primary assessment yeah. scale. If you go back into uh, enter the data, yes, and then resubmit it, it will recalculate all of them as you go back. Awesome. Thank you. That makes a lot more sense. So that is good to know. Now, the one, another important thing to notice here is there's a big red X on here. This means this is not being calculated in a cumulative mark because it's not considered done. 
It's only considered done when you have this assessment complete section filled in and I determine it is done and available to students or not available depending on your settings. So and I've entered, I've entered marks, I've set so the date. So it also won't show up until the date is met. So you can mark it in bits and pieces and say you want it to go live on this date. So after doing that we have these happy green check marks and we can see that there are marks being calculated. So right now, because there's only one column, they're basically translating 100% to the next column. If I add one more column quickly here, that for now. We can hop back over, fire in some data quickly. There we go, we have some random marks. Oh, and always make sure that if we actually want to calculate the marks, we are actually setting that the assessment is complete. Now when I hop back over, it is calculating these marks together. So it's creating an average mark between the two. If we look at it, just at a quick glance, it is weighting everything evenly. And that's because when I go into the columns here, the attainment weighting here is 1. If I go into the column over here, the attainment weighting is 1. If I set this to 0.1 as a multiplication factor, we can see that my 100% suddenly means almost nothing in terms of the comparison of weighting. Weightings are also very flexible. You can use them as a whole number as well as a fraction. So if I wanted this to be worth 20% and this to be worth 80% I can now manage my weightings that way as well. Um, it's pretty flexible, it doesn't even have to add up to 100, the calculations will still work because I knew my teacher wouldn't pay attention. Um, once you have that, you can also start, if your school does weight things by different types of assignments, you can start setting up weightings for different types of assignments. So this helps the calculation if you have, say, um, exams are worth a certain percentage of the mark, you can give it a percentage and start entering calculations for And this will allow you to start determining things that will add up to a weighted cumulative mark. Um, it, gets, it gets more in depth from there once you start adding columns, adding things to different types of assignments, but for a general overview, that is how the weightings and cumulative average system works. Um, yeah, name of them, did that help? At the moment, yes, it only works with percentage, um, because it calculating an average number out of something that might be a letter is really difficult, because lots of other grade skills yeah. Yeah, don't add up to 100. There is a plan to eventually try and calculate the average based on the sequence number of the assignment there is grade scales. In the grade scale table, there is um, a field called is numeric, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you could use that to work out it's a numeric and, and then... I could. Out. I don't think it does right now. Okay. But it it yeah. certainly could. It could. Okay. Um, the other way that it works in the tracking section is that it divides any scale between the bottom of the scale and gives it zero and the top of the scale and gives it one and then marks everything in increments between zero and one. Okay. Um, so then an, an, a U is a zero and an A is a one and then you yeah. can combine multiple grade scales, but essentially becomes meaningless at a certain point. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, further questions, either online or anyone who's here? Um, Gorilla PD. Yeah. Can you trust for that? Gorilla PD dot org. This is a couple of searches. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, can I show you how tracking works? It's uh, a good question. I can't at the moment because I don't have any good data to show you that is not confidential. 
screenshot on the features page of the website. Let me have a look. So yeah, for the for the tracking, you can generate uh, for a student or a group of students a graph of uh, change over time of internal and markbook assessment data. And this is what I was just mentioning. If you look at the scale on the left-hand side, it's not a particular academic scale. It's from zero to one. Um, and that's just a way to get a general flavor of things. Um, the other part of it is that instead of pulling out graphical data like this, you can get the actual grades out and then start comparing them and analyzing them using a tool like Excel. Hopefully in Namathon that gives you enough information to get started, but the, the tracking only makes sense once you accumulate a certain amount of data over time. 